what are you seeing? Is it what Satan is doing to the church? Or the what Satan is doing to the church? Or what God is about accomplishing? Which Bible made us understand that those things will be accomplished in troublous times. He said when the work becomes extremely darkened, that is the best time for you to live. It takes being prophetic to understand that. No, no, it's not your network. I'm the one. See, look here. It's me. I've been trying to get your attention. And um, now that I have your attention, I have a very crucial question to ask you. For how long have you been watching View from the Top? It's just six months. Six months? Two weeks. Two weeks. Five years. Five years. Wow. Wonderful. And have you been blessed? Yes. Yes. Oh, you've been. Great. So explain to the general public why you have decided in your heart huh. that you are not going to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Oh, it's not like that no, no, I'm not angry. See, I just want to give you my phone to like that. that. Take and explain to everybody. Oh, you did not know it was that important. Okay, good. Now that you know, please take the next one minute and um, subscribe to this YouTube channel. It really means a lot to us. Oh, that was quick. Wow, you subscribed. Amazing. Thank you very much for subscribing. Now that you're subscribed, I want to officially welcome you to today's episode of View from the Top, a project of Builders with God ministry. Over the years, we have dealt with a lot of topics ranging from what you could consider to be basics to more controversial issues affecting the body of Christ and the world at large. And so far, it has been an amazing journey of learning and deep reflection. I know that a lot of you have photographic memory. And for we that don't have, we have the mind of Christ. But I would like to let you know that it is both lawful and expedient that you come with a pen and a book to write down the things that minister to you as we embark on this journey of learning together. Okay? Now that we're on the same page, let me do you a favor and help you press play. Hi everyone, welcome to View from the Top, a production of Build As We God Ministry. It's great to have you join us from wherever you're watching. Thank you to my studio audience for making it a date with us. God bless you. Today we'll be going into a very interesting topic, a new one, different from what we did last week. But shortly before we go into that, I would love to implore you to just take a minute or two to share this video with your friends, your family and loved ones. And also subscribe if you have not subscribed. I mean, why haven't you subscribed? You should subscribe. All right, on a lighter note, please join me as we make welcome our father, one of the gifted teachers that we have in our midst, the director of pastoral care for this ministry, Pastor Yomi Omolayo. Thank you, T.Y. You're welcome, sir. Good day, everyone. I'm happy to be here again. Let's pray. Father, we are grateful to you for your love and your kindness towards us. We thank you for bringing us to this planet heart in times like this. Father, just like Esther said, in times like this, Lord, we are also declaring that it's a wonderful time. Lord, we thank you for all you have been doing for us as your people. And today, Lord, we just want to share things from your word. I know that you will give utterances. I also ask, Father, that we give us understanding hearts from the things that shall be shared in the name of Jesus. Amen. At the end of everything, Father, help us, O Lord, to be lifted up in our spirits, to be more encouraged because of how things are going all over the world. We need encouragement. And let the ministration of this hour do that to us. For I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. I've been trying to drop uh, my concern for God's people in recent times. We've been here together in the last two weeks uh, where I talked about the philosophy of Brother King uh, called deism. But today I'll be going into something different from that, but it's still out of concern for us, looking at how things are going all over the world, we are seeing that people of the world are getting more incensed at the way believers are conducting themselves, both the preachers and the followers. And it's becoming a thing of concern. The world system is getting mad at 
believers in Christ as Christians. And if there is other creation from another planet, let's assume there are such, watching what is going on in the world, especially in our country, Nigeria, it looks as if the people of the, have, the, people of the world have the, the justification, the rights to attack us because of the way we have been behaving. And um, in times, in such a time, how should you live? And today I want to bring us, I want to paint a picture of one of our dear sisters in the scripture, Sister Anna, the mother of um, Samuel. So today we want to discuss getting God's best for your life in troublous times. Everything we'll be discussing is around our dear sister Anna, the mother of prophet Samuel. Praise God. And uh, if we look at the settings, if you go into the scripture for Samuel from uh, chapter 1, we will see a, a, a setting in place. There was a woman, Hannah, uh, without uh, children, according to the way it was described in the scripture, barren for a while, no child, nothing. She had... Uh, the husband loved her, and there was her, uh, the other woman in the house, the second wife, possibly the second wife, Penina. Am I right? And uh, this woman, many times we looked down on Anna, and um, it became a concern to Anna. Why the husband kept telling Anna that, I love you, I do this, whatsoever you want me to do. I will do for you. But you and I will know that when a woman is married and there is no child, there is no amount of counsel, encouragement that will hold for long. Sometimes they are comforted. Another time they find themselves in a state of depression. And um, you can imagine a woman that loves God so much, she's serving God, the husband likewise, except the second wife. And uh, to me, I don't see why I should blame that woman. It's natural. Uh, Hagar did it to uh, Sarah also. It's a common phenomenon among women. When I'm the one that is productive, reproductive, you are not. So there is this sense of I'm better off than you. And you know, in any of such settings, Satan will come in and we perch on such people. Like uh, Paul will say, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. So Satan, when he sees an atmosphere where he can pressure somebody more and more to misbehave, to do the wrong thing, to, 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 to see God as if God's being wicked. All those things surrounded Hannah. But there is something so unique about Sister Anna. But before we go further into Sister Anna's uh, resume, as I want to present it to us, um, that time was a time that we can call a time of falling priesthood. We read in chapter 1 of 1 Samuel how that the sons of Eli, they are behaving like some people we know today who on the anointed by God, they have military platforms where we are hearing all kinds of stops concerning them, in terms of how they are messing up women in the in, uh, in the assembly, in the choir, in the drama group, on the, in the offices. And there are cases that have been opened up and been denied over and over in our present time. But as at that time, uh, the children of uh, Eli, they were not even denied. It was so clear. Everybody knew it. And I want to believe Sister Anna also was aware of the corruption in Israel then. The falling priesthood, that even the sons of pastors are messing up. They are not better off than their fathers. And uh, they are in positions. They are also oppressing us. They are making life more miserable. And Bible made us understand, in, I think in 1 Samuel chapter 3, that in those times, visions were very, very scarce. So God's revelation was so scarce. Only scarcely you see some men of God that will be 
bold enough to confront people in the position of leadership. That was the setting. And it's the same we are having today. We are people in the church, leaders in the church are doing whatsoever they like. They don't even care what to say about them. They will be flaunting their follies here and there, don't care what happened. Some marry, they destroy the marriage, they go into all kinds of atrocities, and they defend it on the pulpit. And not only that, they are messing around. They were even recklessly taken from the people. The best of the gift that's supposed to be given to God, it is to them. So God's people are famishing, they are robusting. To the point that the fathers of such, who are their mentors, they are becoming fat like Eli, like we are having the same today. These men of God we see here and they are messing up, they are fathers. And they are selling their fathers. And their fathers cannot correct them. And that's the setting that was playing out then. And we are having the same today in our midst. And Sister Anna was in such setting with all the problems that was confronting him. All those problems that were confronting her then. The pressure of that the, the, the trusted people are scars in Israel then. And here... She has problem, and to some time, sometimes she got so depressed, and it's a troublous time for Sister Anna. So, how did Anna handle that time, and what's the picture I want us to? In our times, like the topic will say, getting God's best for your life in troublous time. By that statement, many of us will think God's best for my life. Is I'm going to get more cars, more buildings. I am not going in that direction at all. We were created for God's pleasure. Hmm. And when God brought Adam to the garden, if you look at, we won't have the time, in Proverbs chapter 8 from verse 22, wisdom began to express herself. And wisdom personalized in Christ later, but it came just like principles of wisdom in uh, Proverbs chapter 8 from verse 22. It said, I possess you in the beginning. When I have not made the fountains, when I have not made this, you are with me as one brought up with me. And my delight was always with you. So there was something about man from the beginning that God wants to live with man in all eternity man will be God's companion, eternal companion, not just for a while. That was the ground under which Adam was brought to the garden. Because in the cool of the day, he was always, God was always with him, moving up and down. And when God was going to uh, be making all the, creating all the, I mean, the animals, bring, uh, giving them their uh, bodily shape, Adam was there and he saw how everything went. And God brought the animals to Adam and asked Adam to give them their names. And it remained that way. If you look at that picture, it means God brought man to this planet as expression of his person. And uh, Paul was telling us uh, in uh, Hebrews chapter 1, describing Jesus Christ as the express image of God's person. Adam, the first Adam, fulfilled that. Because it was God's express image. He was created in the image of God. Everything that God wants to become to his creation, he packaged it in man. And something went wrong. Then man lost that glory. And he left the garden. I mean, he exited the garden by God's arrangement. And there's this song. And this song is so important to me when I was reflecting on this scripture. The word of the Lord we never feel. Until she lo come, until she lo come, until she lo comes. That scripture, I mean, that song is so important to me. I have a lot of revelation around that scripture. The word of the Lord we never feel. Until she lo come, until she lo come, until she lo come. God wants man to be his express image. He wants man to be his companion in all eternity. And that's the picture. If you have time, read that account in Proverbs chapter 
8 from verse 22 to 31. God wants man to be his exact representative before all his creation. What is man? That thou art mindful of him, the son of man, that thou visited him. He pleased God to put everything under man and a crown with glory and honor. So, this is God's best for every man on earth to be like him, to be his express image, to be his exact representative to all his creation. So, when the, when the serpent visited the garden, there was a problem. It looks as if that program has been cut off, that it will never be achieved again. Mm -hmm. The word of the Lord we never fear. Until she look on, until she look on, until she look on. And it went on like that. Then, after the garden, we read of Abel, we read of Seth, we read of Enoch, then we read of Noah, mm -hmm. and it went on and on. Then, God started the project with Abraham. That through your the nations of the earth be blessed. And along the way, God revealed to the people around Abraham then that Abraham is a prophet, my own representative. I say, wherever they go, they must not be touched because they are my anointed. Anybody that touched them, I will be mad at them. This one is marked out for me. That is going to be exactly like me. That's God's best for every man on earth. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, we find ourselves, with, uh, when we get to the children of Israel in the wilderness, they were in the, in, the, in the land of captivity, they were in bondage. And it was a time came, God needed to bring them out of the world system, out of Egypt. And when he took them into the wilderness, he told them, that I want you to be peculiar people unto me. A priestly kingdom with royalty flavor and a prophetic nation. I'm just paraphrasing the scriptures. But we may not have, we, I don't think we have the time to go into scriptures. So that was the picture that I'm calling you unto me. That you are going to be my exact representative. You are going to be my model to the other nations of the world. That while you are doing that, you will be my priest. All of you will become my priest. And you will be a prophetic nation that have clear vision of what's ahead, of what God wants for people. That's what makes you prophetic. Where you can see far into the future. And when he revealed that to them in Exodus chapter 19, he now told them that for this to be, I have to commit you into this reality that this and this are this you are going to be doing henceforth for you to answer that then is he gave them the ten commandments he entered into a covenant with them and uh, that covenant that he entered into them he was not in any way to nullify the one he had with their forefathers abraham but in this case there is something technical about the covenant we made with them in the wilderness. Because of where they are coming from, they were coming from an idolatrous past. And the main problem they will be having with God is idolatry, idolatry, idolatry. And God said, if you are going to be a peculiar people to me, you cannot become it with your idolatrous heart. So I will reveal my will to you. But in the wilderness, they never had what it takes to fulfill that, what will bring them to that reality. But God needed to put it in place because he had in view that these people that have been um, seasoned in sea in the, in the land of Egypt, if they come just like that into my love, they will think this is all they can do to so just earn whatsoever they want to. He needed to let them know that, yes, I have brought you in. By yourself, you cannot meet up with what I have in view for you. But I know where I'm going with you. So he made that agreement with them. 
right in the wilderness. The first thing they broke. When they got to the Mount Sinai, he called them, said, come to me. I want to speak to all of you as a prophetic nation. Then the appearance of God was so uh, fearful to them, and they rejected the prophetic call as a nation. And it looks as if God was not going to achieve his way. Then God was frustrated to the point of now picking up only Moses as his representative. But the original deal was for the whole nation to become nation uh, to become a prophetic nation. Then the prophetic nation agenda got post. Let me call it post. Because in Romans he said, even if we deny God, God cannot deny himself. The word of the Lord we never fail. Until she look on. Until she look on. Until she look on. Then, they went into idolatry right in the wilderness. Golden bar came on the scene. And they lost that holiness. And out of God's deep concern, they were to be destroyed by that act. You remember that was what made God to give them the, his will which we call the Ten Commandments, he knew their problem. He said, if you are going to be peculiar people, you must not follow idols. That was the reason for the Ten Commandments. It's because of the idolatrous states that he first of all gave them that picture, his revealed will, that I'm a jealous God. I am this, I am that. But when Moses was a God on the mount for 30, I mean 40 days, then in Exodus 32, they went about warring with Baal. I mean, excuse me, golden calf. There went, Moses appeared in the camp. Moses got angry. Oh, these people have lost the priesthood again. The word of the Lord will never fail. Until she comes. Until she comes. Then God was forced to be limited to ironic priesthood. Then God managed a ironic priesthood on and on until the days of Samuel. But in Numbers chapter 6, when God was going to give them the laws concerning the Nazar Nazarites, God had in mind that a ironic priesthood will fail. His original plan was to have a people out of the abolition that will give their all. He now said, if you are going to be a Nazarite, these are the things you are going to be doing. And the condition given to them was even higher than the condition for the high priest. A running priesthood was lower. Was of lower order to make a nation priestly. But that was all God had. That was nothing else for God. So when the running priesthood now got to a point, before that will happen, it declares the end from the beginning. He had already made provision for Nazarites. People who will voluntarily go into vow. They will stay away from strong drink. They will not allow razor to touch their head. And which other one? They will not touch death. These things are very, very, very important. You see, when you enter into priesthood, in the New Testament setting, you are supposed to subdue death. You don't have business with death. It was difficult for Moses to shed off the natural man. God has to ask him to die. When you enter into the fullness of priesthood, you don't have business with death, with dying. Because the purpose of priesthood is to destroy sin. And it was sin that brought death. So God was picturing to us that if you are in the priesthood order, you don't have business. There is no commonality between you, life and death. And those were the things he was putting in place. So he now says, if you are not going to be in this order that is higher than a running priesthood, this is what is expected of you. Praise God. And in the days of uh, Eli, there was a falling priesthood. The running priesthood had messed up. The priesthood that people preferred. Not the one God preferred. Now, there was a woman in that kingdom. Who, when he found himself in situations of depression, 
He understood. He saw. What are you seeing in times like this? In the midst of Satan and the world attacking the church. Can you see? Can you flow in the prophetic? It's arise, shine. Rise, shine, for the light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen, for the glory of the Lord is risen up. He said, for there will be gross darkness like it was in those days when Eli was a priest and the children were messing up. What are you seeing? Is it what Satan is doing to the church? Or the what Satan is doing to the church? Or what God is about accomplishing? Which Bible made us understand that those things will be accomplished in troublous times. He said when the work becomes extremely darkened, that is the best time for you to live. It takes being prophetic to understand that. I want to believe. Sister Anna saw that this is not how priesthood should be in Israel. Even the sons of Eli are messing up. And in his pain, he understood that what could have made God to delay me in life? There is something unique about this delay. In the place of, in the place of pressing, he, she discovered that, ah, God is longing for a man child. God is longing for somebody higher than the running priesthood. That we set things in place. And she went to God and said, God, give me a man child. A man that will cover up for the loss of the prophetic uh, agenda of God for his people. And the priestly agenda. And Samuel functioned in the two. The best of God for you in troublous times. Is for you to make yourself available, taking advantage of troublous times, to press in. Give me my slide, the slide five. There is something I want to bring out to us. Hannah prophetic exploits. What are you seeing now? Is it what the devil and the world is doing to the church? Or how God wants to bring out white pap from a black pot? In troublous times. God does the unusual. That what people think can never be. In troublous time, God comes out. Okay, I want to use the basest thing of the world to confound the mighty. I want to use the wisdom, I mean, the foolishness of the world to mesmerize the wise. In times like this, God is provoked to stand up. That this is what I want to do. It's a time of judgment. There was a space of time. In Revelation that God stood up. And there was silence. But what came out of that was judgment. Judgment upon the nation. But underneath. God is out. When God began to judge the people. You know judgment went down the line of I mean, Eli and his children. Why that was about to be, God was already raising up a Samuel. God did not raise up the pronouncement of judgment upon the sons of Eli. Thank God for a prophetic woman that saw beyond her pains, beyond the troublous times, that there is something that is in the heart of God, that God wants to make Israel a nation of priests. And prophetic nation. Then what we are seeing is as if that can never be realized. And he said, God, if only you give me a man child. And when she entered into that deal, that's the kind of pressing in that God wants his people to be doing. Now looking at the prophetic exploit of Sister Anna, do you want to see as eagles or as fowls? Do you want to be prophetic or you want to be philosophical and theological. What is happening now is that there are some like prophet, I mean, Sister Anna. I will call her the prophetess. 
she in this context in first samuel chapter one she was behaving like an eagle praise god she was not dwelling on philosophical or theological concepts eagles are prophets they see far ahead they are not like fowls who see what's just ahead they are disturbed by what is happening and out of their frustration they gather around in the newspaper stands in the beer palace discussing emilocon see where it's taking us to see what is even happening in the in the world system even economies getting out of order in uh, america and some people are just jack mind these people are just seeing what is happening like fowls seeing the immediate but there are some like hannah who are prophetic in mind in their mind they are concerned about what was god's original plan for his people a kingdom of priests a nation sensitive to his voice he, she took advantage of the troublous times in those times. He was not sitting down with other believers. Say, see what is happening with all the men of God. I have business with God Almighty. He has plans for Israel. And I can't see Israel near that plan. But I can drop it down for me. I'm generation that will follow me. And that was Sister Anna did. Praise God. Hallelujah. Fowls cannot, in when problem come, the next thing they start doing is that they become fearful. Shio, shio, shio. They are looking for how to withdraw to some closet. And you will not hear their voice again. But in times, in troublous times, that's when the prophetic anointing becomes more intensified in the church. Praise God. Do you see the need for persistence in prayer? Or you give yourself to be a parlor or newspaper stand debate? That thing is becoming more and more now on the social media. People are just debating. How prayer is nothing else. Cannot do anything. Uh, what will help us now is um, revolution, revolution, revolution. Uh, this and that. There, if there is any revolution that will solve Nigerian problem, it will be God initiated revolution. Anything common initiated revolution will plunge us deeper into mess. Praise God. Sister Anna understood this. He gone. I mean, he went for the heart of God. That something that God wants in this land. And by the time Samuel came on the scene, Samuel started the school of prophets. Samuel used, he never tampered with going to the holies of holy to do anything. He took advantage of his Nazarene um, status. Even helping the priests. He recognized the, uh, the Abiata and all of them. He didn't cross like uh, this man, this king crossed to the priesthood line. But he stayed in his Nazarene status. Within his Nazarene status, he was now doing priestly work. On behalf of the people of Israel. Abi, when a lot of them were there, there was a time the hack of God was taken to the enemy's territory. As at that time, <laughs> there wasn't any day of pre priesthood functioning. Then the ministry of Samuel came up. Then there was a time they, he had to take them somewhere to do sacrifice for them to hear God. And you remember also in his day when he began to take up the mantle of leadership, the Bible said, before Samuel we voice out, visions were so scarce in Israel. So Sister Anna, I'm presenting before us, took advantage of troublous time in Addis to touch the heart of God concerning where she found herself. Where are you, man of God? Where are you, sister in the house? Where are you? What problem are you going through? Are you called of God? Are you a child of God? When God said, I love you, have you stopped believing that? What exactly, why did God call you? Is it to just to give you bread and butter? Or he wants to reveal himself in you? 
These are the questions we need to start asking ourselves in times like this. If a child of God finds himself in one trouble or one problem or the other, what is expected of him or her, that is the best time to press him more. You know, in the previous edition we had about the theology of uh, Brother Cain. When there is a little frustration, God is not answering the way you expect, you abandon God. You say God only exists, but he's very, very responsible. Then I will take everything on my own account. I will be playing by my own rules, no, no longer by his rule. I will do things my way because God cannot help. The last scripture or the last picture I'm painting. Because, uh, have we been able to read one scripture since? No, sir. Now in Isaiah 50, the last two verses there. Amplified, verse yeah. 10. Who is among you who fears the Lord, who obeys the voice of his servant, yet who walks in darkness and has no light? Let him trust and be confident in the name of the Lord, and let him rely on his God. Listen carefully, all you who kindle your own fire, devising your own man-made plan of salvation, who surround yourselves with torches, walk by the light of your self-made fire, and among the torches that you have walk set Walk by abyss. the light of your self-made fire. That is the foundation of deism we, we discussed in the last two series we had. It's playing out here again. Yes? But this you will have from my hand. You will lie down in a place of torment. Thank you very much. What I'm bringing out in this, this is a principle where if you want to go far with God, trouble last times are times that you should be expecting to wait patiently. Once you find yourself in situations like not that you are just allowing the devil to have his way, it's a time for you to recall to yourself, I'm a child of God. I fear him. I follow his servants. I'm in his perfect will. Then what is happening? The next thing is that there, was, there is a third thing to what happened there that was missing. I fear God. Why are you fearing God? I've been following his servants. Why are you following his servants? Then God has to be sure. Why you have feared him, you have followed his servants. Abraham passed that test. Abraham! Bia. That you're picking where you love. Bring him. Come and slaughter him. And that was the supreme test. It's a troublous time for Abraham. I'm sure Abraham must have gone through some kind of depression. Because, you know, God said, God bring your son, whom thou loveth. Bring him. So you can imagine. We just read that Abraham just walked out for you like that. We, the Bible did not show us the struggle he went through. In times like that, when you have obeyed God, you have followed his servant, and you find yourself in darkness, this is the principle of life, that such time is the time you have to now wait. That's the time your trust will be tested the most. It's not the time. That's what Sarah did. Penina tortured her over and over for many years. She did not go for any alternative option. She was always following her husband to the tabernacle. When she's going to the tabernacle, she was not looking at the fallen priesthood. She still had faith in the God of Israel. Whether the church has messed up, because where we are now, people are giving up that there nothing good can come from church again. Because of the mess of the leaders and the followers. But in times like this, God said, those of you that are following me, I'm about to do something unusual. Wait a little. My best for you is to be exactly like me. And after Sarah got that right, after Samuel, Bible says she had five children. The best of, of God for Sarah was to bring to reality the counsel of God concerning Israel. She did that. That in Nazarenes, when the priesthood is messing up, some people can volunteer in Israel to stabilize Israel. Samuel entered into that. And you will see in conclusion, Amos 2.10, he was referring him, I think, 
that I make your sons prophets and Nazarites, but you polluted them. Sons, I mean prophets, young people becoming prophets started in the days of Samuel. Nazarites that enter into perpetual um, practice of uh, Nazarite started at that time. I believe Amos was referring to the time of Samuel that when the fallen priesthood was still the order of the day, there was a woman that provoked God's heart to bring forth a Samuel that changed the order of events. Mm -hmm. And God is looking for the likes of Samuel in our times. Can you see yourself what we are going through? That God wants you to be part of those that will reset and redefine the church. It's a good thing to be alive as a believer in troublous times if you understand what God has declared before now concerning his purpose. And that's why we have to continue to listen to God. Don't play down on all the good things you know to do in the name of the Lord. Prayers, seeking his face, meditating, reaching out to people. Keep doing those things. The God of all patience will show up soon and lift you up. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you so much, sir, for those deep insights. We are very grateful. Um, things to take home for me are, what are you seeing now? Do you see things as an ego or do you see things as a chicken? Basically referring to our perspective. And then troublous times are times that we should learn to wait on the Lord. Our test is always going to be trusted. Okay? Any contributions from the audience? Praise the Lord. Okay. I learned so many in fact today as he was ministering. My heart was so, you know, burdened because I see a woman that in troublous times, instead of crying like others and cursing, she decided, you know, to take up the cross and wait in the presence of the Lord. And as she dug deeper and she was being, uh, she's pressing further, she was able to know what was in the mind of God. And when she asked, she asked God, give me a man child that will be a priest. She knew because she was in the presence of the Lord, she was not distracted. She knew exactly what God needed. And she was, even though she could not, you know, change the times and seasons, but through her prayer, she could bet someone that would have done that. And that is a great challenge for me, that this time is a time to wait, you know, a time to dig deep into the heart of God and then be able to cause a change through my prayers, you know, waiting on the Lord and studying. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Any other contributions? Praise God. Um, I, there was something that I also picked up that um, regardless of the fact that there was a falling priesthood, and um, the order of the prophets was not in line, was not in time in that season. Regardless of the fact that there was, um, there was a call of God upon the life of Samuel, he didn't trespass into the order of um, priesthood. He still recognized the authority that God already <laughs> ordained for the priest. So, um, and also linking that to the fact that there will be times that there will, um, there will, be, trou there will be trouble around like in this season that we find ourselves. So there's also the, um, the responsibility on our part as believers that when we see the truth and the knowledge in these things that we are to correct these things, we should, res we should respect the fact that there are men of God that um, they find themselves in various things that we are not supposed to know orchestrate. And then there's people that instead of calling these people and bringing them into the light of this truth but what do we do we abandon them we scorn them but i believe there's a responsibility on our part to respect that first of all they have been authorized and god has given them authority over the body and then that in bringing them to the fold we do not i don't know i'm going to face it we do not abandon them and then kick them aside like there is there there's no hope for them but she realized that we ourselves can find ourselves in such situations then to be responsible on our part to reach out to these ones in love and in truth to bring them back to the fold. Thank you so much for your contributions. I'm sure we had a wonderful time in God's presence today. Till we come your way again next time, stay tuned. God bless you.